Today, I want to do a very quick discussion, which is how Genshin Impact can fix this endgame, which is current hot topic. As we know from Reddit or Twitter that currently Genshin Impact is blowing up with end game creating anxiety maybe because there's a timer and so it just people didn't like time attack and stuff which is the nature of abyss so at the current moment the nature of genshin impact end game revolve around what we call time attack which is you have a certain amount of time to defeat a certain amount of enemy and if you successfully do that then you get the reward a lot of people would suggest it's like oh just make content without a timer just make different type of content unfortunately what i really want to talk about today is that that actually doesn't work any kind of challenging content in genshin impact is inevitably gonna have a timer not because they want to put a timer in but just fundamentally because of how video game works so today in today's discussion i want to talk about how video games fundamentally work and why Genshin Impact endgame are always going to be time attack. So let's come into our drawing board and let's discuss how video game work. When it comes to video games, especially one that are action RPG like Genshin Impact, where your goal is to defeat the enemy, there are generally a couple things you want to look for. The first thing is what we like to call a win condition or win con. A win condition is basically what the player have to do in order to clear the level, clear the chamber. In this case, this is often referred to as the objective right so for a rpg game like genshin impact it is very simple for the most part your win condition is defeat all the enemy so you want to kill all the enemy and that's what causes you to beat the level now at the same time opposite with the win condition a lose condition must also exist a lose condition is defined where when a player achieve the lose condition they fail the level in this case in genshin impact or once again most commonly in action rpg game the lose condition is that the player HP reach zero. So your win condition is the enemy HP reach zero and the lose condition is your HP reach, uh, reach H zero. So this is the two major thing and they have to be well defined because after all with a well defined condition then we can talk about the next step. The next step given that these are your objective the next step is to talk about the path to victory or the path to defeat and that is very straightforward. They need to reduce the enemy HP. To put it a little more specific or precise they need to damage the enemy by hitting the enemy so the action for you to achieve your win condition is hit the enemy what is the action for a player to fail what is the path toward the loose condition once again it is very simple and that is your hp go down because hp going down usually isn't the greatest thing and so this is two basic concept of gaming right and for a video game to be not even successful but well defined these two must be defined and so by extension your action toward your condition must also be well defined a game that doesn't have a well-defined win condition it's probably not a good game after all you just be doing things mindlessly for no reason right and you don't want to do that you always want to have some kind of goal you want to have some kind of objective there should be a clear way of telling that you have beat the level how does this relate to what we're gonna say and why is it that some other game is successful without a timer and that is because the basic logic of reward and punishment when you perform a action in Genshin Impact or in games in general the Depending on what action you perform, depending on how well you're performing your action, either you get rewarded or you get punished. It. In the case where you successfully accomplish a action, for example, you crash your skills, you hit the enemy with your skills, you're rewarded. What are you rewarded with? You're rewarded with the results that you are able to hit the enemy and therefore the enemy HP go down. So by successfully connecting your skills on the enemy, you are rewarded by your enemy HP going down. But what is the other thing? So what happened if a player choose to make a mistake instead? What happened if a player made a mistake? There need to be some kind of punishment that advance the player toward the loose condition. In in this case, usually in an RPG game, is that your HP go down, but because in Genshin Impact, healing exists or shielding exists, losing HP is not really a punishment. So getting hit in Genshin Impact is not actually a punishment. It is a mistake because while well, you should be dodging and you should be getting hit, you, there should be some kind of punishment. So what is the punishment of you getting hit in Genshin Impact? There must be something. The answer is you lose DPS uptime and therefore you draw yourself back from the win condition, but most importantly, you start advancing what the lose, con uh, lose condition. So in Genshin Impact, instead of just your goal is to reduce the enemy HP to zero before your HP hits zero, in Genshin Impact, your goal is to reduce the enemy HP to zero within three minutes. And your lose condition is not your HP go to zero in Genshin Impact, but rather your lose condition in 
in Genshin Impact is simply the timer itself. Every single second that tick down, you slowly advance the loose condition until this is greater than 3 minutes. That is the loose condition in Genshin Impact. And by getting hit in Genshin Impact, you lose some kind of DPS and therefore you spend more time trying to advance your win condition. And so that is the reason why Genshin Impact combat fundamentally deal with a timer is because without a timer, then these things cannot be defined. At this point, some people will be wondering, how come games like Elden Ring can be successfully defining the win condition and the lose condition even without a timer? And that is because Elden Ring, unlike Genshin Impact, have what we call a finite resource. And the win condition in Elden Ring is that your enemy HP hits zero, and the lose condition in Elden Ring is that your resources run out. In this case, HP is your resource. In Elden Ring, while you can heal by using a pot, the amount of pot you have available is limited. You have, let's say, maybe 10 pot. That means that your total HP pool, the maximum HP that you can ever achieve, is finite and there's a cap. And when your HP hits zero, you lose, right? So let's suppose the player in Elden Ring still have 100 HP and they have 10 potion that each increase them by 100 HP. Then their total HP, or what we like to call effective HP, is 1,100 in this particular case and it will always strictly decrease the key word here is that your lose condition always strictly decrease once you have lost hp as in once you have lost effective hp you can recover in this case your effective hp is 1100 because that is the total amount of damage you can tank before you actually die it could be less it could be even less if you're like heal at a bad timing but never more so in the case of games without timer there is the concept of finite resources where there is a resource that strictly decreased and your lose condition is your resource run out to zero that unfortunately just doesn't apply to Genshin Impact due to the fact that you can continuously refresh your things like HP by healing for infinite or shooting by infinite. And so because that doesn't work in Genshin Impact, your punishment has to be something else. And the punishment is just you lose DPS instead of losing HP resources. Timer is technically finite resources. In that case, resource the resource is your time that slowly strictly decrease based off the amount of time you spent in the chamber. But something must strictly decrease toward your lose condition for an actual well-defined level. Someone was suggesting an idea where what if Genji Impact has a concept where every single time you shield or you get hit, your shield shrink goes down instead. It will help incentivize shielding, but you can also remove a timer. But what you have to understand is that by doing that, you're essentially doing the other thing that I was describing, which is you're creating a loose condition of resources. And you might be wondering, how can you shield infinitely? As it turns out, even if you can shield infinitely, if your shield shrink is reduced every single time you shield, then it's actually not infinite. This is what we call a conversion series. A conversion series effectively is exactly what you're describing. So let's suppose a very basic example where your shield have 100% effectiveness the first time you cast it. And then the second time you cast it, you lose half effectiveness. So you go to 50 and then go to 25 and then go to 12. You might argue that you can infinitely shield and you will still get some shield value, which is true. But this series must eventually converge based on what we know. We can eventually write this out as a limit where um, as limit x to we're going to our infinity and our starting shield shrink called s and then this s is multiplied by one half every time to the power of x here where x is the amount of time you shield even though you can shield infinite time but as x approach infinite this here actually also approach a certain number it will eventually stop it's not actually real infinite because your resources is actually not truly infinite you're essentially describing the other win condition or lose condition where once your finite resources run out you lose this so even if Genshin Impact do that and remove the timer, it will still be following under this logic, it would just be different. In the past, if you remember, we had the um, Rogue Dungeon event where there was no timer. And that event was not challenging because you can just run a team of healer and shooter and never loses. Because, well, there's no concept of finite resources and there's no concept of timer in that event. And so therefore, you can never ever lose. And no matter what you do, you always win. One of the problem right now with Genshin Impact not favoring healer or shooter it's not because it has a timer it is true that the timer favored dps but the more important reason of why genji impact doesn't truly
truly favorite healer or shooter is because every single damage is avoidable. And so whenever you take damage, it's always because you made a mistake. And the contrapositive of that being if you're good enough as a player to never make any mistake or make minimal mistake to the point where it doesn't matter, you don't need a healer or shooter, which is the current case we have in Genshin Impact. So in order to incentivize healing or shielding, what Mihoyo need to do is not remove the timer, but rather create a situation where you can make no mistakes, but you still start losing HP. AKA enemy has to have some kind of guarantee way of hitting you, like a homing missile that no matter what you do, you always lose HP. And corrosion is not one. Corrosion is not one because if you dodge the first corrosion attack, you don't get corrosion. And they have to make that force damage so high that it is not ignorable. It is still gonna be ignorable by whale who have insane DPS to complete the chamber before the damage is meaningful enough. But for the most part, for most average player who are not one-shotting the chamber, having some kind of force damage that are undodgeable could incentivize bringing a healer or shielder and it's probably enough to get by for now. And that's kind of what they're trying to do with Bloom, to be honest. Bloom, as a reaction, forces you to take a healer, for example, or a shooter. No matter what, if you try to play a Bloom team, you have to bring a shooter or a healer or you're gonna get damage taken to yourself. And so because of that, you have to bring a healer or shooter or some sort. And that is one of the things that can do to incentivize healer is forcing damage onto yourself. But do I think Genshin Impact can truly remove the timer? The answer is probably not, as it is fundamentally where the challenge comes from. In order to truly remove the timer, they have to completely rework this part right here. And given the way Genshin Impact character behave, I think it would be a little difficult. Unless they make enemy like one shot you when you do get hit, but that's just punish you for not dodging rather than actually getting hit. So it still doesn't interfere by um, healer or shooter. And to be fair, this is how majority of the game actually work. In every single game that have a timer, like Final Fantasies or Lost Ark, the reason why they have a timer is to prevent you from just doing some kind of infinite stalling and to encourage that you must have a respectable DPS uptime in order to actually clear the content rather than having some kind of infinity dodge forever attack once every 10 minute kind of content. Now the way I guess MMO will do it is that when your timer run out, you don't instantly lose, but rather it, you just got getting heftier punishment so very commonly in MMORPG, the boss have something what we call a enraged timer rather than a strict timer. A enraged timer in MMORPG is a certain amount of time before the enemy go enraged, in which case, why you don't immediately fail the content, the enemy gains significant power up. For example, his attack will now come out faster. Maybe they'll one shot you. Maybe the enemy start healing. The enraged timer is not a strict loose condition, but it is definitely one that you should still be concerned about as it is something something that advance you faster toward the lose condition. A good example would be a enemy having a enraged timer of 10 minutes where after 10 minutes doesn't automatically loses you the game. If you're like really close, like if you just need a spare minute, you can do it. But what happened after 10 minutes is that the boss move is so empowered that the next attack is guaranteed to one shot you and fail you. So in this case, the timer is soft as a soft pity for the lose condition where you don't immediately lose after 10 minutes, but after 10 minutes, your next immediate mistake, aka getting hit, will immediately cost you the fight. That, that's it. So that's one of the way they can kind of play around the timer is that the timer itself doesn't have to be a strict lose condition. It could be a soft PD lose condition instead. But it's not possible to fundamentally remove the timer is what I want to talk about. So hopefully this helped enlighten people. Maybe you can argue I'm wrong, but hopefully at the very least this enlightened some people certain aspect about game design in general and why the timer is not necessarily impossible to remove, but very difficult to actually remove from a fundamental point of perspective. And that's why what most likely will happen is that Genshin Impact will continuously keep the timer aspect and you'll notice the timer on basically like everything. Not just Spire Abyss, but in pretty much every combat related event as well. As it is just required based on the based on the thing they design. So that's it. Let me know what other topic you guys would like me to cover. And uh, I hope to see you guys again. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're on YouTube. And uh, thanks for watching.